can you trust the house price indices here in the UK? That's what I wanna talk about in this video. Over the past few months, a lot of people have been telling me that what they're seeing in their local area doesn't reflect what they are seeing in the house price indices. And I ran a poll on Twitter a couple of months ago and over 80% of respondents said that what they're seeing reported in the house price indices and national HPIs doesn't reflect what they're seeing in their local area. So in this video, we're gonna take a closer look at these HPIs and even better, this, has, this work has been done already by the land registry. So this is an official comparison of these house price indices and hopefully, it allows you guys to then make your own decisions as to how much weight to give to these HPIs and how accurate they may or may not be. So comparing house price indices in the UK courtesy of the Land Registry and this article is from the 14th of December 2023. So it's only a couple of months old. So let's scroll down and get into the interesting bits. So up first, we've got a comparison table and this will probably make a bit more sense once we've gone through the rest of the article. But we're gonna be comparing the official UK HPI, Nationwide, Halifax, LSL, ACADATA, is that, or ASA data, ACADATA, and Rightmove. So there's lots of different metrics we're gonna be comparing, and then we can refer back to this table later on in the video, just for a summary of what each index does and how it works. So up first, we have coverage. Well, the data source for the UK house price index of the official index, Acadata and Rightmove are based on both cash and mortgage transactions. Both Halifax and Nationwide produce house price indices based on their own mortgage approvals and therefore will not include any cash transactions. One thing to be aware of this is Rightmove isn't based on the actual transaction value, that is based on asking price. So that is a very small mistake in this paragraph. Whilst the majority of property transactions are completed with a mortgage, 30 to 40% of sales are completed as a cash purchase. If trends in cash and mortgages sales differ, this may lead to biases in measures that exclude cash sales. So straight away, what they're saying is that Halifax and Nationwide, probably the two biggest indices that get the most coverage each month, they may not be accurate or they may be slightly biased purely because they exclude 30 to 40% of transactions that will be cash purchases, which you'd imagine in a fall-in market, if that's what we're still in at the moment, the cash buyers would potentially be getting greater discounts than the mortgage buyers. The indices of Halifax and Nationwide are based on their own mortgage applications at the approval stage, but after the corresponding valuation has been completed, this may differ to the final sale price as used by the UK HPI and Acadata. Owner-occupied properties only are used by Nationwide and buy-to-let properties are excluded, but buy-to-let properties are included for the UK HPI, Acadata, Rightmove, and Halifax. So there, another difference, again, that Nationwide excludes buy-to-let, but the other indexes include buy-to-let. It's also when the price is considered for Halifax and Nationwide, it's at the mortgage valuation stage, whereas for the UK HPI and Acadata, that is at the completed sale price. So already we're starting to see the indices work in a very different way. So that's just coverage. Up next, we have timeliness. So how up-to-date are these indices? The most timely, so the most up-to-date is the right move. This is published during the reference period and it is for the advertised price. So they're being clear here that this isn't anything other than an asking price. Nationwide and Halifax are one week after the relevant reference period and they are based on mortgage approval valuations. You've then got the UK HPI and Acadata that are based on the registration of sale. Now the UK HPI is six weeks from the reporting period, but actually as it's completed sales, that's probably likely to be more like five to six months after the agreed price. So someone's gonna accept an offer on their property, they've then got four months or so of conveyancing and then a six week delay as well. So it's five to six months delay from that asking price being agreed. If scroll down a bit further, Rightmove is the timeliest of all the indices. This is because its index is based on asking prices from advertised properties. Nationwide and Halifax indices are based on their own mortgage approvals. This means they are able to publish around one week after the reference period. However, as not all approvals are necessarily completed as some sales do fall through, the Nationwide and Halifax indices may provide a biased estimate of sale prices. UK HPI and Acadata are the least timely as they use transaction data at the end of the conveyancing process calculated based on completed sales. So even more differences between the HPIs. Now weights is a very interesting one, this one, something I've touched on in previous videos. 
weights are used to combine low level estimates to higher level aggregates. So they're basically using a small amount of data and extrapolating that into larger estimates. The UK HPO updates its weight on an annual basis based on property transactions in the previous year. Halifax also updates their weights annually, while Nationwide Index updates its weight every two years. And this is so important at the moment, as it looks like buyer and seller behavior in the market has changed due to the cost of mortgages going up and the cost of energy for people actually maintaining the houses. So it looks like the behavior of buyers and sellers has changed. Now, if weightings aren't updated for at least a year or two years in some cases, if they're not updating those weights to reflect what is actually happening in the current market, these indices could be, well, they could be not reflecting what is actually happening. So weighting and knowing that they're only updated on an annual or biannual basis is an extremely important thing to be aware of. In updating weights, the indices are effectively updating the bundle of characteristics in the typical house to provide a snapshot of the average property currently being bought and sold in the UK. So if we had a period a few years ago after the pandemic, where lots of people were moving to the country and buying maybe detached houses in the country. And now all of a sudden everyone is downsizing and buying terrace houses or semi houses. That's a different type of weighting that needs to be updated. And unless these indices are very careful about how they update their weighting, you can see how that could potentially have a big impact on the average price that they then report. Coming down a bit further, we've then got the average price. Now there's quite a bit to read here. I'll try and read it slowly so you guys can process it. If not, just pause it and read it yourself. There are different ways of calculating average prices. These include the arithmetic mean, which is basically the simple mean, the geometric mean, and the median. The arithmetic mean is generally understood by the public to be the average price. However, given the distribution of domestic property prices, the arithmetic mean can be influenced by the sale of high value properties. So you can't really have a good average if it's distorted by one super high value property. And I've got an example to go through in a moment. The geometric mean reduces the weighting given to high value properties when compared to the arithmetic mean, and hence is almost always lower, except when all prices are equal. The geometric mean is usually closer to the median than the arithmetic mean. So let's do some examples. As a simple example, consider five properties, four of which are purchased for £100,000, while one is purchased for £1 million. The arithmetic mean of these would be calculated by summing all of the values of the properties and dividing by the number of properties. So 100K plus 100K plus 100K plus 100K plus a million, divide by five properties, and your arithmetic mean is 280,000. However, the geometric mean of these would be calculated by multiplying the values of all the properties and taking the number of the properties as the root of this. So multiply them all together, find the root, and that is 158,000. So quite a big difference depending on how you calculate the average well, the median is simply the middle number after sorting the data, so that would be £100,000. So how is this used between the different HPIs? As mentioned in section 2.3, the house price indices references in this guide are all weighted averages, and so the example above is very much a simplification. So not only have you got different ways of getting to the average, you've then got the weightings as well, which play a part. ACCA data and Rightmove published based on a weighted arithmetic mean, whilst the UK HPI publishes based on a weighted geometric mean. This implies estimates of average house prices for ACCA data and Rightmove will be higher than those of the UK HPI. So just to confuse things even more, there are so many parts that make up a HPI, and this is why you can't just blindly trust what they are saying. The number of transactions. So how accurate are these HPIs based on the number of transactions per month? Now it looks like the UK HPI should be the most accurate. So you are saying on average about 100,000 per month, but we know this is the grand total after many months of that period being reported. So when they first report for that period, they've probably got less than 10,000 transactions because there's such delays with the UK HPI getting all of the data. So while eventually, it will have about 100,000 transactions for each month. To start with, it is much, much lower. You've got Halifax and Nationwide, which are quite low. Acadata, which is based on the UK HPI, and Rightmove, which is based on asking prices. But really, Rightmove should be a lot higher than this, as this is new listings only, remember. If they included existing listings, they could have the largest data set by far. We'll scroll down a bit further. Halifax and nationwide indices are based on their own mortgage data, so naturally have a smaller number of transactions. 
ACADATA use transaction data from the HM land registry for England and Wales, and so represent all register and transactions for this geography, although data from other independent sources are also used. UK HPI has full coverage, so it's a number of transactions is larger than the LSL ACADATA, and is effectively a census of all housing transactions each month, or like, like I just explained. Initially, they don't have all of that data. There is a big, big lag for that data to catch up and be reported. Rightmove claims to have a similar number of transactions as reported by the HM Land Registry, but as mentioned previously, it's an index is based on advertised sales, which ultimately might not sell in that period. As I just said, that is new listings only excludes existing listings that have been reduced. And then finally, we have the adjustment method. And this is really interesting as a lot of people have been throwing around this term hedonic regression lately. So I thought it would be helpful to explain what that means. And hopefully we can understand how that could potentially impact these average house prices. So Rightmove and Acadata use an approach which calculates the average price for each property type in each postcode or Rightmove does or unitary authority area or London borough, which is what Acadata does. This method is called mix adjustment with a stratification matrix. This method requires enough transactions within each property type and location each period. An alternative approach is called hedonic regression. It's considered to be a more sophisticated adjustment methodology, which is the method used by the UK HPI, Halifax, and Nationwide. So Nationwide, Halifax, and UK HPI are all using this hedonic regression approach. So a bit more about this hedonic regression. In a hedonic regression, properties are defined in terms of a set of features or characteristics, each of which contributes to the price paid for a property. For example, the presence of a garden, the number of bedrooms, or the location of the property will all contribute to the amount paid, but none of these features can be priced in isolation. A regression model is used to estimate the value of each of these features from the set of properties during a particular period. For example, the model might estimate the effect that every additional bedroom and each different location have in a sale price in a certain month, then the price of a particular property can be calculated by combining the values assigned to each of its features. This method allows us to estimate the price of properties with every combination of features, such as a number of bedrooms and regions, even if that particular combination did not trade in that period. So quite a complicated explanation, but actually it's fairly straightforward, isn't it? They're just taking various features and assigning them a set weight or a set value and then assuming or estimating what value of that property may be if it had all of those features. So when you combine all of these things, so you've got the hedonic regression method or whatever adjustment method they are using, you've got the number of transactions that each HPI has got, you've got the average price and how they calculate the average price, the weights they give that and how they adjust it every year or every two years, and then you've got which ones are the most up to date. All of those things together, plus the coverage as well, all of these things together, these aren't mentioned when one of these outlets releases a the latest HPR and then it's covered by the mainstream media. No one in the mainstream media says, look, this is the average house price, but these are the, these are the caveats to this data why this may or may not be accurate. But hopefully this video for you guys ha will help you be better informed. And if I just zoom this out a bit, you can see this full table. Or is it going to let me? No, it's not going to let me. You can come to this website. I'll put a link to this website in the pinned top comment. It will be next to my X profile if you want to follow me on there. But this will be pinned in the top comment if you want to come and read this yourself. And here you've got a summary of all of the HPIs and how all of the things we've just discussed could potentially impact the prices, the average house prices that these house price indices output and the impact that this potentially then has on the public who blindly follow these reports as being gospel and as being accurate. Now, if you've been following the HPIs over the past month or two, you could be forgiven for thinking that the bottom is in. So I've made a video that discusses whether the bottom really is in, and I'll see you guys over there.